So should the president invite Musk to the White House? That's the question of the morning. John Ford is here to weigh in. John, what do you think? Well, Andrew, of course he should. And he should have mentioned Tesla in the State of the Union. And first of all, that electric car summit at the White House last year where Tesla wasn't invited, that was ridiculous. That's like having a White House smartphone summit and not inviting Apple or a White House e-commerce summit and leaving Amazon out. In this video, Elon Musk continues to swing around his gigantic clackers, drawing more attention from Russians after providing Starlink internet access to Ukraine following the Russian invasion. And Musk also has a warning for Ukrainians currently using the Starlink service. More on the White House's corrupt snubbing of Tesla, Rivian backflips after previously f***ing over long-term reservation holders and early supporters of the company with retroactive price increases, realizing they made a colossal error of judgment and have destroyed a huge amount of customer goodwill. Will. Problem is, the damage is already done. Plus, some exciting 4680 battery cell news. So, let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can get two free stocks with Weeble, a free stock with Stake, free Bitcoin with Coinbase, and free Bitcoin with BlockFi, and the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, Join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below, and thanks for your support. First things first, a tweet from the Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, tagging Elon Musk and SpaceX. Many thanks. Starlink keeps our cities connected and emergency services saving lives. With Russian attacks on our infra, as in infrastructure, for those that don't know, this shot here, I believe it was a television communications tower that Russians took out a day or two ago. The idea here is to kill communication within Ukraine. This is why Starlink is so fantastic. Rather than having ground-based communication, which can easily be taken out, you have satellites, a little bit more difficult to get to. What are they gonna do? As Elon Musk said, shake their fist at the sky. And Starlink dishes which are distributed. With Russian attacks on our infrastructure, we need generators to help Starlinks and life-saving services stay online. Any ideas? Elon Musk responding, updating software to reduce peak power consumption so Starlink can be powered from car cigarette lighter. Think about it for a moment. This is absolutely incredible. An over-the-air update allowing Starlink to be powered from the cigarette lighter inside a car. Additionally, mobile roaming is enabled so phased array antenna can maintain signal while on a moving vehicle. So Starlink making tweaks and adjustments right now to the service in Ukraine to help the people of Ukraine based on the current circumstances. A lot of people, it's not safe to stay at home. Some people fleeing in vehicles, also allowing Starlink to be used on the move. This is absolutely amazing to see. I don't think people are truly appreciating how profound and beneficial this is. If you lose communication, if you lose internet access, you've got a big problem. Elon Musk, SpaceX and Starlink stepping in and doing the right thing. But Elon Musk also broadcasting an important warning, quote, Starlink is the only non-Russian communication system still working in some parts of Ukraine. Let's take a pause and let that sink in. Imagine no Starlink, It'd be a dire situation. So probability of being targeted is high. Please use with caution. Turn on Starlink only when needed and place antenna away as far away from people as possible. Place light camouflage over antenna to avoid visual detection. Someone asking, will spray paint work a very thin layer? Elon Musk responding, yes, provided there's no metal particles in the paint. The very fact that this warning needs to be broadcast shows just how critically important the service Starlink is providing to the people of Ukraine. Think about it. If there's a need to hide and camouflage what you have, communications access, it shows just how vitally important, how critical communication is for the people of Ukraine. If it wasn't, there'd be no need to hide and camouflage because it wouldn't be a concern. Elon Musk has three very large anatomical features. Big brain, big heart, and gigantic balls. Starlink's assistance helping with Ukraine, the ability of SpaceX to deliver cargo and passengers to and from the International Space Station is an enormous point of leverage. Just imagine if the US was currently dependent on Russia for all launches of cargo and crew to and from the space station. Big trouble. Elon Musk continues to give zero fucks while getting more and more heat from Russia. Elon tweeted this earlier today, American broomstick. Let's read the quote. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll try and keep my composure here. Russia has decided to stop supplying rocket engines to the United States in retaliation for its sanctions against Russia over Ukraine. Dim Eitri, head of the state space agency said on Thursday, quote, in a situation like this, we can't supply the United States with our world's best rocket engines. Let them fly on something else. <laughs> They're broomsticks. I don't know what. Beautiful examples of these very American broomsticks on screen right now. 
It's hilarious at this point in time that Russian officials within the space agency are posturing as if there aren't alternatives to using Russian technology. Obviously, they all know SpaceX exists, but for some reason they're pretending like they don't. Seems very propagandist to me. So I would just like to take this moment to once again appreciate Elon Musk's gigantic balls. Most people, especially in his situation, would be too fucking scared, too much of a pussy to say or do anything whatsoever. They might be concerned about Russians coming after them, putting themselves in difficult situations, creating higher personal security risks, but Elon Musk doing and saying the right thing, not backing down and willing to step in where he can make a difference. Be honest with yourself. Were you in Elon's situation? Would you have his courage? Would you have his balls? And next, some exciting news about the 4680 battery cell. Panasonic plans to build a US factory to supply Tesla with lithium ion batteries. The article goes on to say that Panasonic is looking at sites potentially in Oklahoma and Kansas to build the plant. Quote, the batteries to be built in any new US factory will probably be the 4680 cells. They definitely will be. Earlier this week, Panasonic said it will start mass production of 4680 batteries in the fiscal year ending March 2024. So two years from now, Panasonic looking at volume production of Tesla's 4680 cells. Now for those who don't quite understand, let me explain what's going on with these cells. Tesla invents a new form factor, lots of new technology and goes, holy shit, this is going to drive our costs down by over 50%. The next step is for Tesla to not only ramp up their own 4680 cells, which they're doing in Fremont at the Cato Road facility, they'll also be producing the 4680 battery cells at all their factories in the future. But the next step for Tesla is also to get their suppliers, Panasonic, LG Chem, etc., producing the same form factor. The 4680 battery cells produced by Panasonic won't be identical to those made by Tesla, but they will have the same form factor, so they'll be able to slot into Tesla's battery packs based on that same 4680 cell design. The 4680 form factor is likely to become a standard in the battery industry moving forward. As we've heard from Tesla, while they continue to scale up their own battery production, they will buy every battery cell from anyone willing to sell to them for years to come. This is a very bullish sign. The fact that Panasonic has confirmed they're going to begin mass production of the 4680 cell within two years, and that Panasonic is now building a dedicated factory for Tesla. Remember, this article said to supply Tesla lithium-ion battery cells in the United States. And now the folks on CNBS share their thoughts about the White House, the President of the United States, who's definitely not corrupt whatsoever and is totally not owned by the United Auto Workers Union in 30 plus years of political bribes. I mean, donations that have been flowing almost exclusively to the Democrats from the United Auto Workers Union. In this strange discussion, let me know if you guys and girls watching pick up the same thing. It's almost like we have a split brain patient here with two separately held opinions. See if you guys can pick up what I'm talking about. Tesla CEO Elon Musk still upset with President Biden this week, pointing out the president didn't mention Tesla in his State of the Union speech. This after Biden last summer hosted an electric vehicle summit at the White House and didn't invite Tesla. So should the president invite Musk to the White House? That's the question of the morning. John Ford is here to weigh in. John, what do you think? Well, Andrew, of course he should. And he should have mentioned Tesla in the State of the Union. And first of all, that electric car summit at the White House last year where Tesla wasn't invited, that was ridiculous. That's like having a White House smartphone summit and not inviting Apple or a White House e-commerce summit and leaving Amazon out. Elon Musk founded Tesla, and Tesla created the modern electric car market. The company produced 300,000 EVs last quarter alone. And now I know this Tesla thing might be politically fraught for the Democratic Party, particularly the pro-union elements in it. But look, some of America's most innovative companies don't have unionized workforces. Tesla, Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft. And as president, you don't have to agree with everything a company does to bring it to the table, especially Tesla, because Elon Musk's Tesla is quintessentially American, an innovative company started by a brash, insubordinate immigrant who has succeeded when the establishment said he'd fail. I mean, have him over to the White House. Well, I completely agree with all of those points. Hit the nail on the head. Nothing more to add. That sounds great. But aren't there risks as you could think? I mean, I could think about a lot of risks if Elon Musk shows up at the White House. He's got a reputation, uh, to put it mildly, for being maybe unpredictable. Uh, well, yeah, Andrew. Uh, on the other hand, the president's going to invite Elon Musk to the White House. He might as well make Kanye West secretary of state. I mean, Don, too, was out last week. He's got some time. K Kanye is also an innovative, brash, insubordinate underdog who likes to share his opinions about people on social media. And look, that's why Biden just can't invite Musk over. It's not about the union stuff. Jeff Bezos and Tim Cook have been to the White House. The problem is Musk's well-established lack of discretion. In November, he tweeted at Democratic Senator Bernie Sanders, 
I keep forgetting you're alive. And he sparred with Elizabeth Warren over taxes because she likes to point out that he didn't pay much in 2018, even though he, he paid 11 billion in taxes last year. And that's not even getting into the stuff Musk has said about regulators. Oh, and less than a month ago, he called the president himself a damp sock puppet. I mean, I would love to talk to Elon Musk. But he calls me a damp sock puppet. He can't even come over to my house. I mean, brilliant entrepreneur, EV pioneer. I think he's uninvited himself to the White House, though, and probably shouldn't expect friendly shout outs in presidential speeches either, Andrew. So it seems a little bit like uh, there there could be a way maybe to choreograph it and bring Elon Musk over if if EVs are that important. Yeah, I mean, you would have to think so. Right. I mean, Maybe Elon Musk would have to signal a little bit more than he has that he's willing to pay ball. And maybe there could be some phone calls. I don't know. But it's, it certainly seems to be under Elon Musk's skin a little bit, even though he says it's not a feud. I think they could probably work this out. So much to discuss here. The first half, the earlier comments there about Elon Musk deserving credit, making sense for Tesla to be invited to these events at the White House, totally on board. But the rationale, the reasoning as to why Tesla wasn't being invited, oh, it's nothing to do with the unions. No, it's because Elon Musk is unpredictable. This is such a bad take. For one, it is all about the unions. The UAW has been bribing the Democratic Party for the last 30 years. Joe Biden is on the record as having said that if you take money from somebody, aka an automotive union, they always want something. And we're seeing this played out during his presidency. This is why Tesla isn't being mentioned. This is why they're being snubbed. And a few more words on this idea that Elon Musk is unpredictable. Therefore, you know, you don't want to invite him to the White House because he might do something stupid or... This is so absurd. The idea that Musk is unpredictable and the connotation there, basically, you would never want to invite this guy over to your mum's house because who knows what he might do or say. The guy's currently running two companies valued at a combined one plus trillion dollars. Think about the kind of meetings this guy has, especially with SpaceX, the involvement with NASA. Do you really think that Elon Musk is going to do something that's inappropriate in that kind of situation? You invite Elon to the White House and he's going to do something dumb? Like, seriously? The only way it's possible to think this is if either A, you're a moron, or B, you have no idea who Elon Musk is. You do not understand the guy at all, in which case you really should be prefacing any comments you have to say with, I don't know the first fucking thing about Elon Musk, but here's my uninformed opinion. The truth is, Elon Musk being unpredictable is code for Elon Musk is uncontrollable. He doesn't bend to the woke agenda. He won't pander. He's not a pleaser. He will be honest. He will be truthful. You can't buy Elon Musk. Elon Musk is all about fairness and honesty. The truth is, swamp creatures aren't comfortable being in the presence of somebody who's honest and ethical and just cares about what's right. Portions of the political left in the United States hate Elon Musk. Why? Because he's not a fan of the woke agenda. Elon Musk is actively being snubbed because if they show public support for Elon Musk, many of their voter base will likely turn on them. The fact that Elon Musk has called out the corrupt president of the United States for, <laughs> wait for it, being corrupt, not a big deal. The fact that Elon Musk has called out the steaming piles of human excrement going after him, the likes of Bernie Sanders, or Senator Karen. Senator Karen literally ran an ad campaign on Facebook tarnishing Elon's reputation, suggesting that he doesn't pay tax, that he's a freeloading billionaire, despite paying over $10 billion of tax last year. The fact that Elon Musk claps back at these people who unreasonably attack him, isn't a big deal. This isn't the reason the White House isn't inviting Elon. Politics is a nasty business. You should hear the shit that these very people now working together in the White House, the Democratic Party, have said about each other in the past. Seriously, if you want to do some homework, look at some of the things that Kamala Harris has had to say about Joe Biden. Look at what goes on behind the scenes. They're not butthurt. They're not upset because Elon Musk clapped back. That's not the reason. And now on to Rivian's backflip. Here's an email that was sent out to customers, allegedly. Quote, for anyone with a Rivian pre-order as of the March 1st pricing announcement, your original configured price will be honored. If you canceled your pre-order on or after March 1st and would like to reinstate it, we will restore your original configuration, pricing and delivery timing. Our team will be sending an email in the next few days with more details. AKA, we're sorry, we f***ed up, we tried to screw everyone over, we're morons, we did something moronic, and we want to make it better. Well, unfortunately for Rivian, most of the damage will already be done. This is kind of like f***ing your best friend's wife and then saying, hey man, uh, I banged your wife, but I'm really sorry. As I mentioned when I first covered this retroactive price hike, the only possible explanation for Rivian doing this is sheer desperation. They're in such a difficult financial situation they're so worried about not making money, collapsing as a business, going bankrupt, not making it to volume production, and I really do mean this, that they were willing to make the decision 
to destroy goodwill of their earliest supporters. People who'd put down reservations, paid a deposit, Rivian was willing to completely f them over. This was a brain dead decision, I said it at the time. How dumb can you possibly be? Even if you're desperate, just take the L. Lose a bit more money on these vehicles. Big fucking deal. The worst thing an EV startup could possibly do is f over their earliest supporters. That's exactly what Rivian did. Based on a poll I saw on Electric, which is anecdotal, but still useful. I think there were well over a thousand votes. More than half of the customers who had reservations canceled them after the price hikes. This has no doubt left a bad taste in the mouths of every Rivian reservation holder. It's good that Rivian have tried to do the right thing now, but you shouldn't have to make a colossal and obvious mistake before recognizing it's a mistake and reversing course. I do not understand. What the fuck were Rivian thinking? Seriously, by the way, this is a gigantic red flag. The fact that this decision was made by a company at such an early critical juncture would have me running for the fucking hills. So I hope you guys and girls have enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments below if anyone else is excited for SpaceX to drop their latest broomstick. I for one can't wait. And don't forget, if you haven't already joined Patreon, hit the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment to sign up and join the community. You'll instantly gain access to over 100 exclusive Q&A videos on all sorts of topics, loads of other exclusive content and perks, plus exclusive access to my Tesla stock price targets out over the next decade in the bear case, the base case and the bull case. I'll see you over there. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can get two free stocks with Weeble, a free stock with Stake, free Bitcoin with Coinbase, and free Bitcoin with BlockFi, and the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below, and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel, and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.